So I guess uh, the other day, Joe Rogan said Jews like money and everybody's mad at him. And so, so, of course, when I hear this, that on the Joe Rogan experience, he said something to the effect of that uh, saying that Jews don't like money is like saying Italians don't like pizza. And I'm, I'm trying to understand what his point was. And I, I kind of don't see it because when I see this reporting, my first thought was, oh, is he saying like all people like money? Like if you came out, and you said something that's so dumb that they're trying to argue that Jewish people don't like money. All people everywhere want money or access to resources. I'd say, OK, I mean, you understand the stereotype behind that, right? So <laughs> in trying to understand this. I, uh, I, I don't quite get what Joe Rogan was trying to say, but hey, maybe that's just me. Let's, uh, why, why don't we take a look at what uh, the story is, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. The New York Post reports Joe Rogan accused of anti-Semitism while defending disgraced rep Ilhan Omar. Rogan has been accused of casually spouting anti-Semitism on his hit podcast while trying to defend under fire progressive rep Ilhan Omar from the same charge. The UFC commentator was discussing how certain terms led to people getting canceled, when he decried the Democratic squad member getting booted from the House Foreign Affairs Committee for her past anti-Semitic comments. He highlighted Omar apologizing for talking about it's all about the Benjamins. He said at the Congresswoman's 2019 message about American support for Israel. It's just about money. She's talking about money, Rogan said in an episode of his show. That's not an anti-Semitic statement. I don't think that is. Rogan insisted of the term widely denounced as a racist trope. Benjamins are money. The idea that this is, what, this is what Joe Rogan said. The idea that Jewish people are not into money is ridiculous. That's like saying Italians aren't into pizza. It's effing stupid. It's effing stupid. I, I just, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Everybody likes pizza. Everybody wants money. John Stewart had a famous uh, um, comment on this that Kanye West brought up. That he said that the fact that you can't even bring up that there are many Jewish people who work in financial institutions makes it actually difficult to, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but like dispel some of these theories. And I don't know about all that. When we had Ye on, we ended up looking up the, the heads of big banks and like they're like Protestant and Catholic and stuff like that. And so I don't, I don't, I don't know where this trope comes from. But the other thing about pizza is that, yo, like, have you ever had Italian pizza? So I had a roommate 10, what is this, man, this is longer than 10 years ago. This is 14 years ago. And he was from Italy. And he one day asked me if I wanted pizza. And I said, yeah, pizza sounds great. And he goes, okay, I'm making pizza. I will, you, I will make you some. And I'm like, cool. And then he brings out a piece of bread, circular bread with olive oil on it. And I think it had zucchini on it. And then I was just like, ah, oh, Italy. Yeah. Yeah. See, like the pizza we eat, cheese and sauce, greasy and pepperoni, not the same thing they ate back there. So I think it's actually an interesting uh, example to say something like that, because what you think of pizza is not what they're eating over there. So again, when I first heard this, I was like, is he saying it's stupid to say because everyone's interested in money, especially people in Congress or whatever? I just got to say, I think Ilhan Omar is anti-Semitic. Um, I, I think that her statements crop dust it. I don't think she came out overtly slamming Jewish people. I think she came out and got real close to tropes about Jewish people and Israel. Rogan then said, whether you agree with her or not, Omar had shared a bold opinion. And that opinion is not her own. There's many people who have that opinion and they should be represented, he said. This is kind of an interesting thing for Joe to say. I mean, I disagree, Joe. However, he soon found himself under attack with some critics even tagging Spotify. Now, that's stupid. Look, Joe's allowed to have his opinions, man. So is Ilhan Omar. And, um, you know, fair point to Matt Gates. He made a great argument. He says, I'm not sure removing Ilhan Omar from her committee because she said something you don't like is the appropriate move. However, it should be voted on. Ultimately, I believe Matt Gates did vote to remove her for this. It is what it is. UK comedian David Battiel, author of the book about anti-Semitism called Jews Don't Count, also accused the podcaster of spreading a racist myth on the show with a big grin. I actually want to stop banging the Jews Don't Count drum at some point, but hard to do when a racist myth about Jews is just said breezily on one of the biggest podcasts in the world and no one gives an F, Badiel tweeted to his 880,000 followers. My guy, like they literally care. Yeah, you know what I'm going to say? Joe Rogan's a good dude. That's it. It's silly. I mean, I disagree. I, 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 I'd prefer if like he could explain to me what his thoughts are. I'm not mad at him. Uh, I don't hate him for it. I'm not offended by it. I'm also not Jewish. But, uh, you know, 
Joe, Joe is who he is, and he's allowed to have his opinions. And if you don't like it, question him, ask him about it. What does he mean? But I got to tell you, man, you know, this story was getting a lot of play. Joe Rogan was trending. And I almost didn't want to even do a video about it because I often don't like doing segments about other people who do commentary. But there is a question of the Joe Rogan experience being the premier show. And so I'll, I'll, I'll say this, you know, on this story, I, I personally disagree, I guess. I, I, I don't understand. And my view on the whole uh, Jewish people and money trope stuff, it's just like, I don't know. I grew up in Chicago. I knew a lot of Jewish people who were poor. So that never that never made sense to me. Like when I'd be hanging out with a friend and we're, you know, I had a friend who was Jewish and we're both playing guitar on the street to try and make, make ends meet or both working a minimum wage job. It just didn't make sense to me when they were like, you know, all into money or whatever or anything like that. I'm like, not my friends. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I think all people are capable of all things. I think if you want to make a trope about people, it's like, it's, it's sure, whatever. I just think as we, as we progress, as we, as we grow, as the planet changes in certain ways, like these tropes may exist because there was something at some point in time when cultures were isolated. But as we become more mixed ethnically around the world, these things just increasingly don't make sense. So if you've got some historical fact to bring to me about like the Rothschilds and like the Napoleonic Wars and things like that, I'll be like, oh, that's interesting. But if you talk about today, I'm going to be like, I don't know, man, I got Jewish employees and I assure you they are not all about the money. And I've got friends I grew up with and they're certainly not all about that. And that doesn't make sense. I got Italian friends who don't like pizza. I just hate, I hate stereotyping people in this way. I, I, I hate the idea that you could, you know, just cast an, a wide net or, or blanket over whatever. But I will say, yeah, I don't care if Joe Rogan has opinions, man. I don't care if Joe Rogan has awful opinions. I don't care if you hate this opinion, partic- you know, and find it bad or whatever. Joe's got a lot of opinions. He's allowed to. The crazy thing is that we decided this is something worth talking about. Now, I'm, I'm not so interested in talking about Joe and his opinions. I am interested in the concept of someone as famous as Joe and, you know, what life must be like for him. I know Joe Rogan. Uh, I, I text him periodically. He gives me uh, health advice. I, I mean, I mean, whatever. But like, you know, it's a joke. But quite literally, I ask him about stuff like supplements, vitamins. He knows way better than I do. And he told me I got to start lifting. And I'm like, yeah, he's probably right. I probably do got to start lifting. I skate. So my legs are, are pretty fit, but my upper body, you know, I don't know, I'm going to do a few, few pull-ups. But in the past few weeks, with all of this attention focused on me, I started thinking about, man, it must be miserable for, for, for Joe. And uh, here I am talking about him. But I can only say this. The reason why they care about his opinion. He's one of those guys with high level charisma and people become obsessed. I tweeted, stop being obsessed with me. And a bunch of people started hooting and yelling and they're screaming. And um, it's crazy to see all these videos that pop up that are just lies about me. And it's more and more every single day. And uh, it's not going to stop. It's a crazy thing. In the past couple of weeks, since the beginning of the year, I don't know what happened. I don't know. I guess with, since, since Ye came on, Tim Cast IRL is just viewed as being more important and more influential or whatever. I'm getting emails. I'm getting direct messages. I'm getting text messages. People are finding my phone number. I don't answer my phone anymore. They're asking for things. People I don't know. My, my phone is, is lighting up and blowing up with people constantly trying to get in touch with me. And I can't do it. I really can't do it. So I, I can only imagine that what it must be like for Joe, because he probably can't exist at all. There are people who will email me and they'll be like, hey, man, long time no talk. You know, it's been a few years. I could really use help. And then I just don't have time to get back to everybody because I have like 70 emails from people, you know, reaching out, asking for something. And, I, and, and I'm not saying they're not allowed to. But then the problem is some of these people, when I when I can't respond, they get mad. Then they start talking smack about me. Then they make up lies about me. It's just it's, it's really crazy. We've got stalkers that won't leave us alone. And I'm just thinking to myself with with stories like this about Joe you know, man, maybe I can shine a little bit of light into probably what it might be like to to be him. So I'll put it this way. Imagine you can never answer your phone again because the people who are calling you, uh, I'll give you an example. I'm waiting for a phone call for a delivery service. The phone rings. It's a number I don't recognize. I can't answer it. So I send it to voicemail or I ignore it. If I do answer it, chances are it's going to be someone asking for money. No joke. It's going to be someone being like, hey, I'm looking for uh, Tim Pool. I got this really great idea. And I'm like, my guy, I don't have time. I don't know you. I am busy. Do not call my personal phone. They do it anyway. 
So then what I do is I just delete all the phone. All, I got to change my phone number. I got different. I got three phones. I got whatever. Like, I don't even have like a personal phone at this point that I can use. I don't have a personal computer. Can't do it. Can't answer DMs. It's crazy. I can only imagine what it must be like for Joe when you do a show and then everything you say is a major news story like this. That's the only reason I really want to talk about it. More so to, to explain like, you know, what, man, fame really is a bad thing. And the more people learn who I am, the more I don't like it. And so I said this in the beginning of IRL the other day, I could probably stand to be taken down a peg or two, meaning I don't know why I have 1.5 million followers on Twitter, man. I, I don't I, I don't feel like I do things desperately trying to gain followers. I feel like I post nonsense. I don't know why I gain more subscribers. Some people got mad at me that they're going to unfollow me. And I'm like, good, I guess. Yo, I just talk about what I think and feel on the internet and all this stuff starts happening around me. And it's just like, if I, I, I don't know, we got a big show tonight, Timcast IRL, and I'm, and I'm thinking about this stuff and I'm like, yeah, it sounds really fun to go to the Capitol and sit down with sitting members of Congress. You know, today they, they, they were grilling the Twitter execs and things like that. And then be able to interview many of them pertaining to these questions. And I'm like, all that's going to do is result in more people knowing about me, lying about me, being obsessed with me, stalking me. And man, it's not worth it. It absolutely has never been worth it. But you know, like, I don't, I, I truly do not understand the extent to which it must be really bad, like Joe Rogan might. I don't know what, I, anyway, man, that is what it is. Joe, I don't care about your opinion. And I, I don't know what you were trying to say. I disagree. And I think the solution to this is just to be like, hey, Joe, I think you're wrong on that one. That's it. And then we'll move on from it. Next segment's coming up in a few minutes. Stick around and I'll see you all shortly.